Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion. Today we are going to be covering a very important area, a very important part of our life. And I'm your host, Aisha Maksu Sheikh, alongside Esther Balaga. Today we're surrounded by our seniors, our graduating class who's about to leave us. So proud to see so many familiar faces and great people. Can we start introducing ourselves? Hello everyone, uh, I'm by the names Akima and Lillian. Hi everyone, my name is Arleti Hirwe. Hello everyone, my name is Chizusomu Kanwa Alto. Hello everyone, my name is Karengira Esta. Hi people, my name is Amy Tracy Kamikazi Manzi. Hello, my name is Gahizi Uhiriwe Shanis. Hello everyone, my name is Nwari Eme Patrick. Hey, my name is Agatis Ketio. Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Romata. Hey everybody, my name is Stacy Sao Angel. Hi everyone, my name is Pesha Boutique. Hello, my name is Masasuke Zaket. Hi everyone, my name is Umuridir Gwatesi Raisa. Hi, my name is Niela Queen Ange. Hi, my name is Kesi Kazilisa. Hi, my name is Beza Otriel Kakwa Destiny. Hi everyone, my name is Kemba Priscilla and I'm excited to be in my fun new year of high school. Now we know everyone who's going to be discussing today. What are we going to be talking about? Why are we here? Aisha, tell us. Yeah, so are you guys ready? Yes. You guys ready to hear the main big thing we're going to be covering today? After high school, what next? You know, what is the thing you're going to be doing after high school, after you get your A-level results, your A-level certificate, after you get out of this campus? What's the first thing on your mind? We need to know. So, what do you think, Esther? Personally, I don't really know right now. I think the first thing I want to do after my exams is probably take a nap. <laughs> Real. Yeah. But first, let's talk about our high school experience. We've been here for four years. Many of us just joined. Many of us have been here since grade seven. It's been a long experience. We've been here, we've come from far. Personally, when I first came here, I was like a really shy, introverted person. Who I was in grade seven wouldn't do this. I but think I helped you with that. Please. But who I, I am now, I'm more confident, I'm established, and I'm smart. Asha, how was your experience? Well, mine. I think it was the same thing. Like, I came here around stage nine. I, was, I wasn't really very social. But then things changed. I started getting more extroverted. And I'm not going to complain. I made a good friend circle. Like, look at y'all. Like, I'm very happy with how my high school year has been. I mean, of course, it's not always like the fairy tales. We have our lows. But we get through it, right? We get through it together. So, shall we start? Lillian, how, um, how's your experience? Tell us. Thank you. Um, so, my experience in high school, uh, wow, it, it has been a roller coaster. Six years in high school, six years. Um, obviously, like you said, uh, we have our lows, we have our apps, we have times when we're struggling, but. In all the times, all those days, the days when I was low, the days when I was high, they've led me to the person that, I'm, that I am here today, the person sitting in front of you guys. And I think um, my experience in high school was very good. When I started um, in, I started from year eight. Um, it was a different school from, the, from Mother Mary. And it was, um, I, that's the first moment that I joined Cambridge. I was in a national system before, and it was difficult because you're coming from primary, you're a little kid, and now you're expected to grow up, and it was boarding, so you had to take responsibility for yourself. So I came from being a kid that knows nothing because... When you're a child, everything is done for you. And then you go into high school and you're in a boarding school. So you have to make sure that you're doing everything for you. You have to maintain. No, your mom is not there to tell you not to do this. And there's a lot of struggles in high school, especially with like peer pressure and everything. So you have to maintain the person that you are today. Like 
you have to be able to fight for yourself, fight for what you go to school to do, first of all, it's study. And I am grateful to say that everyone that all that I experienced, um, all the struggles, like they have led me to become a, the responsible person that I am today, that I know I can manage, like after high school, without a teacher, without my parents, without anybody, I know I can go there and be like, I did this. And I think that's a really great thing to be proud of. So yeah, thank you. Lillian, before we move on, what, is your, what was your scariest moment in high school and how did you overcome that? Um, my scariest moment in high school, um, I think, um, so when I was in grade 10, um, I think that's probably like my lowest, lowest moment. Um, we had this, so it was like a bad experience and I was in trouble with the school and that was like, I feel, that was like my biggest moment because when I was in the school, I built such like a foundation with the school, with the teachers, like a social environment. So in that moment, I wasn't scared because it's like all the trust that I built in people was broken at that moment. So the disappointment that came with that, I'm not gonna say exactly what it was that got us in trouble, but the disappointment that came with that experience was the worst of all because I had to start afresh to try to rebuild the trust of the people that are broken, like my teachers, um, the school administrators, uh, my parents actually, because I did something that was, I wouldn't say unimaginable because it's normal in high school, but you know, it wasn't exactly. So I would say it was the disappointment that came with it. Yeah. But it's fine. You, you grew out of it. You, we are over it now, we and we move on. Yeah, yeah, we were proud of you. Yeah, I think it's that moment that actually taught me how to be like, you know, I need to, when I started afresh, it was like that low moment that was like, that shaped me to become a better person. Yeah, so I think I learned like a lot from that. True, that's right. As she said, we need to become better people. We, we, we're not in a competition with others. We're in a competition with ourselves. We need to be better each day. How you were yesterday, be 1% better each day. Very so, true. right? Let's move on to other high school experiences. Uh, I think personally, high school experience differs from the perspective we take in life. For example, as someone who has changed schools at multiple times and changed countries too, it's different from how we have the experiences. For example, as I was studying on my previous school, if you compare Mother Mary to the other schools, it's literally so different. Um, the teachers there and the students are not close like how I've seen here at Mother Mary and the students too. They're like, I'm, mind my, I'm going to mind my business, you're going to mind my, your business. So, but for me, high school experience has been one of, um, so far, the best experiences because of the up and downs. Um, because in high school, you get to become a new person. And I believe that if you have not become a new person while in high school, how are you gonna develop? So high school experience was fun with the friends and especially that now I'm here, I have new friends which, you know the laughter, you know when you're doing break time and then you're laughing and then after break, teacher comes, you're still laughing and it's like, <laughs> are you serious? You have exams made June, please. We've always, we've, so, we've all been through that. Let's exactly, so the time that um, you spend with your friends, it shows you, okay, so outside there, this is what is going to happen. So high school experience, basically it was fun. So you told you told us you went through you know different countries. Do you, did you learn anything new in those different countries? A little like Portuguese. Yes. <laughs> um, as you know, when you move to a new country, you have to adapt to the social norms and values. It's the same thing as high school. If you're coming from here and you are taught to be ob like to obey the school rules. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. But when you move to the other countries, like Mozambique, for example, is where we're staying, you, they don't obey the school rules. You know what I'm saying? So it was tough to see, like, okay, so this is how people live. You don't respect your teacher when he tells you, go out, you'll be like, no, I don't want to go out. So it was different, right? But it was really um, enlightening and power, power, it was powerful. Thank you. Yes, 
Beautiful. Aldo, what do you have for us? Yes, let's hear from our brother. When I, when, for my first time when I came here at Mother Mary was in 2022. Uh, I, was, I was afraid because my current school, they were, it was a minor seminary. Then I, when I came here at school, uh, my friends were just asking me, what's new? I, what, what new do you have? Like, what do you know? And me, for me, I was like, the only thing I know is that I know nothing, as the Socrates was saying it. But as I continue living with my friends, being socially with my friends, I just realized that I'm really talented. Because uh, you've seen me in different in graduation when I was dancing traditional dance. Uh, uh, in praying, I was just preaching and teaching them how good is good. Uh, we used to learn Latin also, where our slogan was Magister Artist Advocate, which means like the master, the master is there and is calling you. So wow. my high school experience was really fun. That's amazing. It's beautiful. It's really touching. How did you deal with you know your friends asking you a lot of questions and everything? Uh, for my first time, I was afraid because the minor seminary, you know, it's only boys preparing them to be a priest. And when I reached the, here, there are a mixed school where there is boys and girls and girls. So for the first time, I was afraid. But after a while, I've seen that there were nice people like <laughs> people like me. Of course they are. So, so I, I just started to free up and talk with them. That sounds like a great high school experience, Esther. Um, my my high school experience was truly, would I say, um, a roller coaster. For me, high school, um, it taught me a lot of stuff. Truly, during those um, during those moments where you don't know where you're heading, it's when you actually find out what you want to do in life. So at first, um, socially speaking, socially, at first um, I was not social. I still am not, but I'm not scared of people. Um, starting high school is very intimidating because you're wondering, what will I do to influence the, the community around me? Other people, you, you just see your peers, you just see everyone, you're just wondering like, where I am in this stage right now, I should be a accomplished, I should be having like an idea of life, I should be having, you know, all of, the, all of those thoughts just surround you and just lead you into confusion and fear, which um, leads to the question you asked earlier, that what was the scariest moment um, in high school? For me, at first, every day was scary for me because waking up, just going to school, not, what, not having like an aim of what you want to achieve. Yes, we have this aim, we, ha we want to get good marks, we want to get a good job, we just want to, to just do good in the community, but what truly really is within you, right? And I didn't know what I desired most. So that waking up and not knowing where I'm going in life, what I truly want within me, was um, scary, but during high school, I learned that n not knowing, that's when I encountered God, because the scary moments led me to asking the creator, because you can't really know how to use something without having its, um, you know, like you can't know how to use a television without, uh, without truly knowing the manual, how do, you, how do we use this television? So it led me to asking God, like, you're the one who created me. That's when I encountered God and yeah, aside from that, I got many friends, um, my best experience was in internship where I went with my best friend Ebo. Um, being close to your best friend and learning new stuff within um, different fields is, was really eye-opening and it also helped me to know the careers I want in life, to, what to pursue in life and yeah. Your story just moves me so much because I can relate to it. Every day, it's not the easiest to get out of bed, to come to school and work and do your hardest. And I think everyone can relate to that. And the fact that you use God to help you, to motivate you is really, really beautiful. I just want to ask, what can you tell people who are going through the same thing? What did you tell yourself every day you were coming? What can you tell them? 
um, each, each day I, uh, when I woke up, each day when that fear just came over me, after, after knowing God, each time I woke up, I just thought, like, my creator who created me, he still sees me. He knows why he brought me here on earth. So why should I fear of the unknown when he knows what, what I desire most? Since he, see what, he sees truly what's in my heart, I doubt not that my ending will be great if I hold on to my creator. So that's what motivated me to, to, keep, to keep waking up, to keep striving to do better, even when I don't know what's coming next. Yeah, it's just trusting God. Beautiful. Amen. I think we all have been through a, a moment where we don't know what we're doing. Like we're just waking up, like she said, and then we just we're just going with the flow. And I I I was there too. And you know, I used to get a feeling like, do I really have a aim in my life? Is it is it really worth it? Is high school worth it? Let's be honest. We have all thought of dropping out. Be honest. You it's more just than others. Though. Yes, I accept. <laughs> I accept because. Um, dropping out is not bad, but no, if you have like a plan, then you cannot just drop out and think of a plan later. Um, yeah, so if what she said, what, you know, she did to help her overcome that, as God and everything, that's great. What I did was I held others accountable, like, you know, I, okay, not right holding others accountable, but I... If someone is depending on me, I used to be like, no, I got to do this. Like, if not for myself, for them, I have to do this. So that's something that kept me going, you know, support from my family, love to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Let's hear from Tracy. Well, personally, my experience with high school was pretty negative. Like, um, ever since I stepped into stage seven, I just couldn't wait to be done with this. There is nothing more I looked forward to at the beginning of the day than just going back home. I did the school. It was not the learning part, not the friends part. It was more of like um, everything about high school. I mean, you're in uncomfortable chairs. You're writing the whole day. My my hand is cramping up. I'm feeling sleepy. However much I used to sleep, I it never felt like it was enough and um, basically I just I thought that uh, uh, and when I stepped in high school in stage seven I didn't go with my primary friends like they all changed schools so I was just like what am I even what am I even going to do to be doing here but uh, as a mother Mary student for like six years now I you just grow you just adapt to it like you have no other choice if you don't go to school you'll go to jail <laughs> or your parents will so <laughs> I had to do that and one of the worst moments I remember is the fact that for the previous three years I've been a candidate three years straight every May June I had to do a set of past papers when there is nothing greater than God that could get me through that. It, literally every year, past papers, same pen, same everything. It just felt, I just wanted to be done with it. And um, yeah, basically that's, ladies and gentlemen, the truth. Like the real truth about high school because I can relate to that. Right now my bag has like, three huge, massive books of past papers. It is huge. We're going through it, but with the grace of God, we're getting through it. And we're almost done. And it was a great experience overall. It made us stronger. It made us wiser. And I remember you in grade seven because we studied together this whole time. And how you were in grade seven, Tracy was like the funniest person ever. She still is, like making us <laughs> laugh today. But she's such a smart, wise, strong person. And congrats to you. I was going to ask a question about giving you all a reality check on high school, how it's not always fairy tales. And I think she already did that. But do you want to like be more brutal? Be crucial. Just go for it. Tell the Give truth. them the reality check. We need it. Well, 
Uh, one thing I want to tell maybe people who haven't stepped in high school or who are in the lower parts of high school is there is no easy lesson. Whether you are a humanities student, science student, there is nothing that is easy. You see, usually people think that there is a loophole that maybe if I do the easy subjects like maybe history, literature, maybe French, or nothing is easy. Everything will give you a headache. So if you're going to high school and thinking, I will take these easy, easy subjects so I can get done with it and just, you know, hurry out of here. It's not gonna work. Trust me, I was I was her. I was the person who thought maybe if I take this subjects, maybe nothing literally everything you do, everything you do, you have to work for it. So high school, yeah, it's school and everything, but it is school, you know. You need the grades, you need the you need to go out there, you need to Exactly, you are. It's the foundation of your future, of your life. So you need to do your part too. Yeah. She said that right. There's no easy way out. Every way you're gonna find obstacles that you will have to find a way to just get through them. It's never easy, right, Esther? It's never easy, and probably from here it will probably get harder. We don't know, but the fact of the matter is we got through it. We're strong <laughs> enough. And we're strong enough to face whatever is going to come in the world. Yes, we Something are. Something that the MD told us just a Before while Before we back. started? But no, not really. I just want to focus on that. That we are what the world needs. We're more than enough. We're strong enough and we're capable. So that's something that we've all learned from high school because we've made it here and we can make it to the next stage. Shanice, bless us with your wisdom. Well, my high school experience wasn't exactly what I expected. Because I remember back then, I used to watch movies such as um, High School Musical. Okay. <laughs> and that would make me think that, that's, uh, that high school is all about dancing and like vibes. And getting into high school, well, it wasn't exactly that. It was, <laughs> it was pretty tough and hard for me. Well... Uh, making friends wasn't hard because coming from my previous school, I came with um, with Stacy, uh, so socializing wasn't exactly hard for me. But however, as I got I got past the classes of um, of high school, secondary, um, things just just starting it just started getting harder and harder, which was really hard for me, especially when we started doing our Cambridge papers in grade 10. We started doing our IGCSE papers. Um, it was pretty hard to to keep up, uh, especially remembering, uh, by remembering like what I expected high school to be. And things just weren't easy. That's true. Grade 10 is when everything started. Grade 10. Honestly, what she said about socializing, how she didn't have trouble socializing. Me, however, I came from a different country, to a different country. I came here, I came to Rwanda from India with no friends. And that's why, how, like I said earlier, like my one year was a bit tough. But grade 10 was when I made some friends for life. And even though grade 10 was hard with Cambridge, IDCSEs and everything, we get it. We, we're here now. Who's next? So, Patrick. Um, my high school experience was uh, kind of messy because for me, when I, I came here in uh, 2021, and when I arrived in grade 10, I was, kind, I was coming from online uh, classes. So I was kind of uh, scared because I wasn't, I hadn't been used to online classes, just talking to people through video calls. So when I came here and uh, started to talk to people, I kind of got scared. And I wasn't used to IGCSE and Cambridge, uh, uh, ca the Cambridge classes. So I was, I was scared. But thanks to people being around me, being supportive, I became more 
extroverted, I became less scared. I just started to to open up and thanks to it I got passing grades, I got better grades, I started to improve, be it uh, academically or socially. I improved in many different ways which I didn't even think was possible and I became a better person just by changing schools which which to me wasn't what I thought was going to happen when I first came here and to the me that I am right now is a whole different person that to the me that I was at the beginning because I am so much better and I am uh, more more of a a better person than I am at the beginning. Very interesting. So, Patrick, what was your favorite moment in high school? Um, to me, it was uh, it was when we did the culture cultural thingy, we <laughs> the cultural dance. We, me and my friends, we were doing the drums, which were something that I hadn't done before in my life. So I, was, I wasn't used to it. So I just started doing it and apparently I became good at it. And then when we went to the stage, I was, I was really scared and I was scared that I would mess up. I was scared that I would do something bad. And honestly, we did amazing. Everybody did their part. Everybody did amazingly. And we ended up uh, doing a great show, and everybody enjoyed it. Right? Like mistakes. We all make mistakes. But what I take it, as Bob Ross said, do we know Bob Ross? He's an artist. Yeah, I, I might know. So happy accidents. That's, that's what I take from it. We learn. We, you know. Improve, yeah, we live, we adapt. So, Ketia. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good? Yeah. Tell us, how's your high school experience been? So, my favorite thing in high school was, I think, the friends. Because when I used to wake up, I'm like, I don't want to go to school. But then, my, my friends, I, I think, oh my God, I'm going to have fun with my friends today. We're going to laugh because it's the best thing. Uh, so, <laughs> actually, that's what I think was my best high school experience because my friends, they're so funny, so, yeah. <laughs> and academically, I think um, it's exhausting. It's, it's very hard, but then you just have to strive. I had to strive to work hard to make my friends proud, so that's, that's what made me have a nice high school. That's what I can say, I think. I have a question for you. Ketia. Yeah. Are you proud of yourself after your whole high school experience? I think so. What is the greatest thing that you have achieved while at Mother Mary? Uh, Mother Mary, I think I've, I became more serious because before I was, I didn't used to, okay, I didn't used to be so serious about school and all that. Because my previous school, nobody cared and all that. But then when I came here, I think I took it more serious. So, yeah. That's right. Mother Mary is all about discipline, value, our integrity. And see, it's working. We're developing some yeah, really nice future generation. So, write us. Indeed, we're developing some really good future doctors. I see some engineers, some artists, some musicians, some engineers, some doctors, some businesswomen, some entrepreneurs. There's so many. The list is endless. Let's continue talking about our high school experience. Nathan. I first entered in a national school, and it wasn't that big or that, we weren't that close. I had like two friends or two three friends, but um, talking about music, um, it wasn't that big like here. I had this friend who would, who would like, um, who had this pen and would beat on the desk and then as he be beated it, it would like make a melody and then I sang. And then I remember the first song I sang and I was like, wow, I can actually sing. Because when I, uh, 
I got I got out of primary. I was a great dancer. I was a dancer at first. You guys probably don't know me as a dancer, but I was a dancer. <laughs> didn't expect that. Yeah, I was a dancer. Uh, actually, a cultural dancer, traditional dancer. Yeah, I have a picture of that with the hair. We might put yeah. it after the video somewhere. No, no, I, I no longer <laughs> have it. I no longer have it, but um, I had. I, I was a dancer, but then when I reached high school, I sang this song called um, which one? Love Yourself by Justin Bieber. And then I sang it, and then I was like, the guys were like, you can actually sing. And then I sang it one time, two times, I like, I can actually sing. But then the year was short, and then I left the school. I came here in uh, grade eight. And uh, when I reached here, I saw guitars, I saw keyboards. I was like, wow, this is my place. And um, before it, uh, in the... In the holy days, I studied guitar, and uh, I came here when I knew guitar, and then when I came here, I met this great friend I'm grateful for, Miracle. He's a great guitarist, and we met here. We came here in the same year, and um, yeah, we started there. We started there until um, today. High school has been a great thing for me. I've been... Um, I've grown spiritually, um, academically, everywhere, and um, I'm grateful for it. I, I can't forget this time. It was, it's like the, the greatest moment in high school. Talent show. We performed. We performed on talent show. We had prepared it for two weeks, I guess. I rented the, the drums myself. I was like very, very into it. I was very excited and performed. It was a great performance. I can't forget that one. And um, yeah, I can say that. But um, I'm glad I'm finishing high school as a great person. Yeah, I've, I've, ch I've changed. I've chosen Christ. And I'm in a good path, I guess. I've become Christian. And I'm looking forward for what God has in his store for me. Yeah, that's it. We're gonna take some few talents from here, you know. So, Stacy, hello. Uh, hey. You ready? Yeah. Embrace us with your high school experience. Um, high school was pretty tough for me too. When I came here, I started here in grade seven, and it was tough because. I literally just wanted to end, just like Tracy said. Like, even till this day, I just want to end, like, as soon as possible. But I had um, great high school experiences, like playing for the school team. That was really... It's something that I really appreciate um, being from being in high school. And, um, yeah... So you want Tracy and Stacy. You guys want to end school. So you do realize that means we're not going to be meeting every day, sharing those short conversations during break, lunch. How do you feel about that? Um, it's going to be, of course, um, different. But we're evolving, I guess. We're evolving, yes. We don't do same subjects. Where I'm in a science, I'm the science dream student, and she does humanities. So like we discuss stuff we get, and you know during breaks or free lessons, like short conversations, short exchanges, like exactly. literally 15 minutes. I'll drag her out of the class, and I'll be like, I I gotta tell you something. I really need you to know this. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Real memories forever. So, would you want your high school experience to be somewhere different, like something you didn't get it and you want it? Um, yes. Um, yes, but partly, I've, I learned some stuff when I was here, which um, made me um, learn and basically grow. So, of course, I wouldn't change that, but of course, I would want better, a better high school experience. But this was, this was good, too. 
What do we have next? Beisha Budige. Okay. <clears throat> High school was a roller coaster. Um, honestly, looking back at everything that I've done, it was it was a lot. And to be completely honest, <clears throat> high school was not the best experience in my life so far. Um, especially because it was kind of stressful. And coming from coming to Mother Mary from um, COVID and from online classes, <clears throat> it was it was stressful because you know going to school face to face and you've just been video chatting with your teachers. It's a bit different. Um, it was a lot, and honestly, it was it was really tiring. And as Tracy and Stacy said, there were times where I really didn't even want to like step in school or like I didn't want to go to school. I just wanted to get over with. And it's funny to say that because at the beginning of like say middle school or the beginning of high school, I was fantasizing about high school. I was like, oh my god, it would be so like magical. It's gonna be the best. It, as they say, it's the golden years of your life. But to be honest, sometimes it may not feel like it is. Um, so I really got this kind of disappointed by that quote. But at the same time, I made like the greatest friends in high school. Um, to give you a context, as a kid, I was really introverted and I didn't like, I didn't socialize with people a lot, which this is kind of the same right now, but I made really good friends. Um, I learned, like, I was able to adapt with more social cues and I now, like, have friends. I was also able to um, um, more or less kind of find more hobbies. For example, I love doing art, I love drawing. I don't know if most of you know me as an artist. Um, some of you may not, but I really love drawing. And that kind of brought this out when I came to, to Mother Mary. Um, yeah, so to sum it up, yeah, high school is not really like the best experience so far, but yeah. You said it's not the best experience, but you might have moments where you felt like, oh, this is so worth it. What are those moments? Um, I think those moments were mostly with my friends. Um, we had fun at school and we'd laugh and we'd just joke, kind of joke around and just talk. It kind of made the environment feel like home. It made it feel like family, it made it feel like very comfortable. Um, I think that's one of the, as well as like when academically as well, when you do good in a subject that you wouldn't expect to do good in, or, you know, when you are doing academically very good. Um, it feel, That's a great feeling. That's, like, one of the best feelings. When I passed my IGCSEs, it was, like, a really good feeling. And when I spent time with my friends at school, that's also, like, a very... Like, it's a special moment that I keep to my heart. That's a beautiful experience that we're so proud to share today. Kitsia, tell us about your high school experience. Well, my high school experience was full of ups and downs. So when I started uh, high school, uh, I started uh, on another school, a national school. So like, you know, whenever we start high school, it's like we're starting a new chapter of our life. It's like, it's another thing we're going to experience like further from primary school. So when I got into high school, um, I tried to fit in in the environment that I was that I was in, so I tried to make friends, because I knew I wouldn't survive without making friends, so I tried all my best to make new friends, and I think I had a little bit of peer pressure, because I tried to fit in and look cool, like do what everyone else is doing, show everyone that I'm also capable. So I tried like a lot of things, like dodging classes, a lot of things, like I wanted also to show people that I'm also capable, like by like associating myself with people that do cool things. So, okay, I can call it cool things, but it's not cool things. <laughs> well, uh, I got along with that, new friends. Then uh, uh, when COVID started, we all went in lockdown. There was no studying. We were just all there 
doing nothing, especially for us national students. We had no online classes. We were just sleep, eat, sleep, eat, sleep, eat. That was the whole thing for like almost five months. So like in when schools op uh, opened, uh, that's when I came here at Mother Mary School. So this is one of the things that was so difficult for me. When I left my previous school, uh, I had just started uh, grade nine. So when I came here, and it was almost like, when I came here, it was like the beginning of a new year. So grade nine, then grade 10. But like when I came here, they told me I have to repeat grade nine because grade 10 is a candidate class. I was like, I can't repeat grade nine. Like I started, even though I started for only one time grade nine, but like I was in grade nine. So there's no way you guys are going to tell me that I'm going back to grade nine. So it was so difficult for me, but I had to accept. And I think that was a good thing because I wouldn't go in a, straight in a candidate school. And it, this was a Cambridge school and I was from a national school. I couldn't just step into a candidate class. So I started school and it was very challenging because I started studying with uh, students that I was a little bit older than them. It was very challenging and I was like, how am I going to survive with these kids? Like, we don't understand things the same. Like, it was very challenging, but I was like, I have to get through with it. So I tried to make friends again. Uh, I made friends, we got along together, but like, I really thank God that in high school, that's when I, I grew like, especially here in Mother Mary, I, I had experiences that made me grow, that made me mature. So when, uh, towards the end of grade nine, my friends, two of my friends, like I had two friends, they were the ones that would spend break, lunch, go home with them every time. So like towards the end of grade nine, they all went abroad. So I stayed alone, I was like, you know what, I'm also going to tell my parents I want to go abroad. There's no way I'm going to stay here alone, start again with making new friends, start everything afresh again. What am I going to do? So I, thought, I pressured my parents, I have to go abroad too. There's no way I'm staying here. So they all told me that that's their life. You also have your life to do. It was very difficult for me to accept it, but I had to accept it. So we started grade, uh, grade 10 in 2021, towards the end of 2021, September. So when we started grade 10, I'm so glad life bought me friends that I, that I knew from primary. Uh, so we started our friendship, we restarted our friendship again. So those were my friends that I, I had for grade 10 for a full, mind you guys, I had new friends again in grade 10, but like those friends were from primary school. I knew them and like, it wasn't very difficult for me to get along with them. So after sometimes we were all I remember when we were doing IGCC we were all like after IGCC we were all graduating. All uh were graduating then we leave. Like there's no way we're also going to continue grade uh ten uh, grade uh, eleven and twelve. That's what we had in mind. So, so Ketia, are you grateful for <laughs> uh -huh. Are you grateful for your friends, the friends you got? What, what are your you know, moments where you felt like maybe it could have been other way around? Like, you know, moments where you wish you went to a different school maybe? Did you have those moments? Of course, like when my friends left me, I felt like I want to follow them. Like I want to go where they are. I don't want to stay here. I want to go with my friends. I just met them now, they're leaving me. So. It was very hard for me. That's a great <laughs> Guys, this is, this is how we are, you know? Like, we cannot get through a conversation like without laughing. laughing. But I it's good. Laughing is a healthy exercise, guys. I think okay? that's why we're your host today, because we have such a good connection right, where we just right. laugh all the time. Honestly. But your high school experience was incredible. It taught you some real life moments that we all need to learn. We cannot follow our friends, especially <laughs> after this, we're going abroad and to different places and we can't follow our friends. And it's great that you learned that in IGCSC. Some of us here laugh until we cry, right, Beisha, Stacy? <laughs> okay, let's not put anyone on the table right now. Let's not throw anyone under the bus. Okay, that's uh, for another time. We've Saving gone through it. the general high school experience. We want to focus on what this talk show is about today, this discussion. Why are we here? To talk about what's next. 
I know that we have some other people's high school experience we haven't talked about, but we're here today to talk about what's next, what's after A-levels, what are you striving for? All of us have talked about like it's been hard, but what is moving us? What is motivating us? Tessie, do you want to share with us what's next? What do you have in mind? Uh, yeah, so as we all know, like after high school, people expect you to go like for university, which mm -hmm. I'm going for, university. Uh, however, um, I want to be a young entrepreneur. So for me, my goals are to before like going to high school to have like a business plan whereby I'll be able to pay for myself for uni. Um, I think that uh, in this generation the problem that we have is that we are looking for jobs when we can create one. So I really, I'm a type of person who don't want to work for anyone. Uh, I want people to work for me. <laughs> That's a boss mindset, boss right girl, there. yes. And she said she's taking her own responsibility, trying to have a business plan so she can, you know, pay for herself, which is really nice. And plus, I think we are already being more responsible here in Mother Mary, you know, student board. We have so many student board members, cultural leader, religious leader. We have our president here and academics. And then, of course, me. So we're already being very responsible. We've been teaching, like, you know, the school is teaching us responsibilities. Don't you think so? As A-levels, they look to us as the eldest, the people who are modeling and showing everyone else what they're doing. And we have so much on our shoulders that at times it can feel like we're crumbling underneath the weight. But we're surviving and we're going forward. And listening to Tessie's plan for her future is motivating. And I hope it motivates the viewers as well. Queen, what is your plan after high school? So we all know high school had been so difficult and confusing and it was a struggle. But after high school, uh, I'm planning to go to university and like pursue my business career or like explore more about art as like I'm so passionate about art. So apart from that, I want to put like everything that I've learned in high school, like uh, the social, uh, like the things going out there, uh, financial, I want to be financial stable. So like my friend said, uh, I also want to somehow open a business to find, to help myself financially. But yeah, uh, after high school, uh, I want to go to high to university and explore more uh, about the social life. Yeah. Why do you want to go to university instead of just starting your business? Uh, well, why do you want when you can do both at the same time? Yes. That's great. Yeah. So I want right. to do both at the same time, and so that I can like experience more advantages as I grow older. Killing two birds with one stone. Yes, yes that's smart. how we go. Esther, are you, are you planning to take a gap year or, because personally I'm not, I'm just going to jump right from one journey of high school to another university. It's, you, some might think like I'm rushing things, like it can be said, but you know, it's okay. Are you going to take a gap year? I don't want to take a gap year. I feel like the momentum I've built here in high school, like studying every day, waking up early, if I take a year off, it will reduce that momentum. I want to keep going forward like a truck going towards a wall, like really yes. hard. To university to study some biomedical engineering, probably in the International Institute of New Zealand, hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, and we, have, yes. we have plans, we, uh, we see you. Yeah. We see you. So, Casey, what's your plan? What's on your mind? Okay, so for me, um, after high school, I want to go directly to university to study law with international relations. Um, I want to do that because like, the, the inspiration I have for, um, from my family, most of them are lawyers, and ever since I was a kid, it somehow, like, inspire me so I, I want to be like them 
and I want to once I become a lawyer, I want to like establish myself there to so that at some point in life I want to be able to um, pay back my parents, like provide you know to pay them back for like all the years they put me through school, like all they did for me, and yeah. Okay. What? circumstance or what's something that's going on in the world that you as a future international lawyer will want to change? The thing I would want to change is the inequality, like gender inequality, you know? Um, like I said, um, in other countries, you know, um, men are mostly like put on a higher pedestal than women, like especially in, um, like, in terms of jobs, you know? Like in some companies, um, men are mostly paid higher than women, even though like they work like almost in the same jobs, same sectors. So um, I would want to change that because it's uh, it's not fair, you know. Yeah, that's true. We want we we want equality. We don't want misogyny. We don't want toxic feminists. We want equality, equal rights for both. I love the mindset, if not me, who? If not me, who is going to change the gender equality in the workplaces that we're all going to? This is what the world needs, honestly. That's the mindset the world needs right now, depending on the current situations and everything. We, we're aware of it, and that's the right decision. We, we really, you know, it's, it's, it's really impressive. Yes, it's impressive. Beza, what do you have for us? What are you going to do after high school? Um, so before saying what I'm gonna do after high school, um, I have to say I learned that I have to stop focusing on others and actually focus on myself, which is what I'm gonna do after high school. And first of all, I want to start how to, I want to learn how to drive. I want to get my li my driving license, and then um, get a job before starting uni immediately and then get the job experience because in high school we did the internship that I really enjoyed and I would like to like get more of that uh, doing a summer job and then later that's when I think I'll be ready to start uni. That's a nice one. What career do you see yourself venturing into? Um, I see myself doing um, international business and like improving the different business uh, strategies in this uh, world we're in and like maybe make a change with my creative ideas. That's such a good plan to motivate and to unite African businesses at being an international businesswoman. Priscilla, what is your plan after high school? Okay, so after high school, I prefer to, in September, to join university, hopefully, LAU in Mauritius. And um, high school has been prepping me for, for that outcome. Like, in high school, it has really humbled me. It has shown me that being naturally smart is not enough, and you also need to add in hard work. Like, you can be naturally smart. Like, for example, in primary, everything was easy for me. Like, it was only A's. But then when I came in high school, it showed me that, bro, that's not enough. You also have to add hard work. You have to keep your head in the books. So that's what inspired me for after high school, when I joined university, so I can work hard. Even though I might think that it's easy, but just because it's easy doesn't mean like I'll be able to do it. I have to work hard, put in the effort, so that I'm able to achieve what I want to be. Uh, first of all, I like expensive stuff. I don't want to live a poor life. I really yes. want to be rich. Luxury. Yeah, we live for I, luxury. I want to be rich. So, um, so I want to be rich as soon as possible when I'm still young, so I can enjoy my money. So after high school, hopefully, straight to university, work hard, get a job, then get that money. Cool. Preach. Are you? Okay. So, you said you're going straight to high school, but you're doing major, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we are all candidates here, but we just have different October number or May June. So after May June, you're gonna have a few months free. What What's your plan for those months? What are you gonna do? Chill? Some new skills? Are you gonna learn some new skills or just spend resting? 
Okay, first of all, it's summer and I'll be done with high school and a stressful one after the May June exams. And still, summer, you cannot be broke in summer. I'm gonna find a job or a sponsor and okay. then I'm going to enjoy summer okay. <laughs> before I go for university. Okay. Enjoy life while Red. you have life. Exactly. <laughs> Lillian, I see the shock on your face. Exactly. It's like we live every <laughs> the day next like, generation like there's no everyone. tomorrow. We live every day like there's no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow there is not go. guaranteed. There's no tomorrow. Yeah. What are you going to do next? Okay, so honestly, all of us here, we can all agree that we don't all know what's happening after high school because um, our hopes, we have hopes and dreams, we have goals, we have objectives, but we're not exactly sure where what, what happens after high school, but we're working towards a certain goal. You see, if some of us here already know what university we want, and I may not be sure of um, what university that I'm that I want to go to, but I know for a fact that after high school, I want to be an influential person. Like, when I'm old and I'm sitting in my front porch and I can't stand and I need someone to bathe me, I want to look back and think and be like, I did something. Like, I changed lives. Life. Yeah, I changed lives as a person. I look back and I'm like, I didn't waste my life. I worked. I secured a future. I um, um, I helped somebody. You know, I I wanted to look back and know that I had fun. I lived. I led a good life. So after high school, I think um, I'm trying to apply to um, universities in Canada uh, because I have a sister there. Shout out to her. She's my inspiration, and she she's told me a bunch of times that before after I'm done with high school. I should sit down and write a list of priorities. Um, Some time back, we were talking, and she told me something. She was like, "If I, when I was, when when she was going to Canada, if she had someone to make her write a priority list, like what she's going to do there, she would be so far." Because when she went there, she was a young kid and she was following her friends. So she told me that she wants me to write a list of priorities, what I want to achieve when I'm going there, what I'm going to do there, basically, if it's a life that I'm going to build. So I think that as as much as we're planning to do this and this and that, we should sit down and look at where we want in life and where we want to go and prioritize that, make a scale of preference, that we, that's what we call it in economics, it's a scale of preference, and you prioritize things depending on what comes first and what happens next. So yeah, I think that's it, thank you. These are very important things that we should all be taking note of, because like, we all want to go to university, yes, this and that, but the range of things that we could be doing with our time after high school is immense. The sky is the limit. So if we sit down... The sky is not even the limit. We don't have a limit. True, we, do we don't not. have a limit. But the sky doesn't even have a limit, so we have nowhere to stop. We can do anything. And we really need that mindset in today's world where people are always just fighting to do what their friends are doing or what looks interesting, rather than following what's important. Aldo, what is your plan after high school? Uh, for me personally, my plan after high school is going straight to university. Like I want to be a mechanical engineer, and the, if I want to be a mechanical engineer, I should be a mechanical engineer. engineer. So uh, I can say like, if uh, uh, I want to be successful as a successful man, like where people see like, this man is a powerful man. This one is like unstoppable. Like that's why I'll be seeing like who who is Aldo? Like Aldo is the person I'm seeing there on the television who is conquering the world. So as they say, if I want to 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 build the future, I should do it in my ways. I should do it by following following my studies in university and learning more things about the earth about the about the world where I should do it even by praying by praying God as they say in Psalms God is there for all 
That's right. Um, I, I remember a quote, what he said because of what he said, uh, by Steve Martin, if I'm not wrong. Be so good that the world cannot ignore you. No one can ignore you. So, conquering the world, powerful man, we hear you, okay? We In the future, the remember us, okay? We, <laughs> remember us. Remember your friends, the manifestation of the your... The ones exactly. here, the ones supporting you. In this room. You. Exactly. Ariel. Um, I think what's next for me is, well, I don't know, I'm not gonna lie. The pressure I have is already enough to think about what's next, but I'm a firm believer that what you think is gonna happen is not what's gonna happen. Because as a Christian, right, uh, there is something that we set in our minds that as self, we are important. But I think that um, I'm someone who believes wait on God because what God is preparing for you is not what you are preparing yourself for. Um, so what's next? I'm going to take a gap because it has been a lot, a lot of years suffering. And I mean, if life gives me the opportunity to, get, to take the gap, I'm going to take it. And well, I'm not, I'm not in a rush. Uh, I think when the time is there, I'll go to uni and, well, have the time of my life, as they say, so, yeah. Wow. We see a lot of people here having plans of taking gaps or going straight to university. We see the plan, we see the movement. We just need you to establish it, because right now, right here, we believe you, and you can do it. Esther, what is next for you? Um, for me, what is next is, well, um, I can't take a gap here. My age doesn't allow me. Age is just a number, which sometimes well, matters. Uh, for me, it really does. But, um, well, I'll go straight to uni. That's the first thing, but uni won't really be like... I also have things I want to do during that time. I want to... Um, um, right now, in my heart, I just feel led to working um, with charity organizations. Not, not as in, like, getting paid. If you... I mean, getting paid would be nice, but, <laughs> but it doesn't um, harm us. if not paid, I still would love to work for them, especially organizations that um, take care of kids, um, children's rights, human rights. Um, my heart just goes out mostly to children who, like, for me, um, by the grace of God, I was given an opportunity to go to school, have clothing, um, have good parents, have a loving family and stuff, have food on the table. But then those, I, my, my heart just goes out, my sympathy goes mostly out to the children who are out here who just don't have enough to, 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 to go to school. They might, maybe the government might be giving them free education, but they don't have the food on their table. They're, they have those deficiencies, you know, those sicknesses that don't allow them due to poor nutrition. Just my heart goes out to them and I want to work in charities that help those kids and yeah, just as Esther said, if not us, who will? I don't have much. I don't have much. I can't really start my organization. If I would, I could. But since I don't have maybe the strength that I have within me, maybe that compassion I have within me can lead me to help people. Guys, let's just keep in mind, what she said was really heartfelt, by the way, like, it wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for God, right? Because thank him every chance you get, praise him, be grateful, because this opportunity is not received by everyone. You sitting right here, it's yours, like, others don't get it this often, like, it's rare, so be grateful, right? And what she said, if I could, I would, that mindset always have that try having that mindset and because that's can. beautiful she can do it she even can, with something yes. small she can do it and you can change the world with the small that you have yeah. tracy what's next for you after high school well not only is it a time that i have been waiting for for so long six years man could this be any longer Counting down but the days. <laughs> 
After high school, I also want to go straight to uni. Uh, I'm focusing uh, in uh, data analysis or data science, and I would like to, you know, go to like a great university like Trent, maybe Waterloo, like <laughs> Germany, any <laughs> university there. Yep. Sponsor her. <laughs> But yeah, um, after high school, well, right after the day I'm done with my exams. I think I'll just um, go. I won't go home. I will just take the longest walk ever, oh and just God. I'm going to thank God for getting me through the six years. And I really look forward to when I reach the end of this journey, because it was a really long journey. It was a really hard one, and I couldn't achieve it without. You know, some major people like my teachers, my friends, God above all, my parents, anyone who believed me when I just thought that I couldn't. So I, I think I'll do that right after. You know, we should go on a walk together. Cause my plan was the day I finish my exams, I'm getting out of school and like just walking around, buying some snacks, just chilling, being proud of myself because. We worked hard here. We're some of us are surviving on like two to four hours of sleep. Let's be honest. Exactly. Right? It's crazy. Shanice, let's hear from you. Um. So, my plan after high school is um, obviously like to go to university. Um, planning mostly true the uh, true university that's in Canada, and uh, I'm going to. Um, Um, where I want to work with the World Food Organizations, and mostly like um, reduce, I'd say reduce problems, world problems with hunger and malnutrition, and food safety. So yeah, that's mostly why I want to pursue uh, international relations and World Food Organization. And after graduation, like. <laughs> Like after graduation, honestly, I, I've already told my parents I'll just take a break from everything, hang out with my friends, um, you know, go for parties, just relax. Everything I couldn't do because of studying, just yeah. <laughs> We're all so excited. We don't even have the words to exactly. express what we want to do. But it's beautiful that many people in this panel have the dream of helping others. That is something that Mother Mary has taught us all the time, to help others, to always not only focus on ourselves, but the ones around us. It's beautiful to have a family that we have made here. Charity, Mother Mary. Remember the hospital we went to? Yeah, we went to a hospital. Oh we God. gave back to the community. It was such a good experience, it was. and it was really eye-opening to see people who I don't have the same experience. I was even more grateful after I, 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 I went there, and how grateful people were to just receive some food or like you know daily necessaries. Like they were so grateful, thanking us, giving us blessings. It was just so peaceful, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. That helped us a lot. Who's next? Kitya. Kitya, are you ready for us to tell us about your high school experience? Sure. Um, so, me, I press. I think I'm gonna go straight to uni because I just want to finish it all, just straight up, and then. Um, I just hope God will help me. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. That's what I plan to do, but I hope God will help me through that and actually finish school, I mean finish university, get a job, and work for the money, yeah. Yeah, I heard another person here telling us that our plans are not the same plans that God has for us, and we do not know what's going to happen tomorrow, but at least we have the idea, the mindset, that we know that tomorrow we'll be here. Who has the mic next? Patrick, what are you doing after this? Um, I also want to go straight to university. For me, I'm, I'm going to try to study uh, mechanical engineering. This is because uh, since young, I've always wanted to build stuff and build things that could help people in any type of way, be it transportation, communication, uh, any way possible. I want to try to 
build something that will change the world in a positive way and so I can be remembered as someone who was who was there for the world in in their needs and that I innovated the world as many people did and that's really you nice. should build the next eighth wonder in Rwanda <laughs> how cool would it be if it was Patrick who built something so great like the Alpha Tower here in Kigali imagine oh is it just me? No, it's not just me. I know. It's just not me. Like, when we were kids, we would act, act like mad scientists, break stuff, and then try rejoining it, mix stuff. Have you done anything like that? Yes. It's, it's um, not. It's not. <laughs> uh, personally, when I was young, even though I don't really want to say it, I was, be, I was let by my parents kind of alone, so I, I wanted to do stuff, the most random things. So I would build like kites out of woods and wood and string that I would find anywhere. Innovation at a young age. The randomest things. Exactly. And I would build anything that uh, I would think of if possible. Stacey. So Stacy, let's yes. hear what do you have in mind? What's on your mind? Um after high school, I personally want to go straight to uni, and I'm I want to major in cybersecurity, and help people in communicating and basically help people struggle on the internet, and I want to join universities, um, specifically in Germany or anywhere in Europe, because. Um, I have a lot of family members that attend universities in Europe and I feel like it's, it's better if I go there because I'm closer to them, closer to them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, cyberbullying is really a big deal right yes. now. Yes. And we're glad that you're here right. to protect yes. us. We, have, I got we see you. a laptop. Protect the school. I got protect you. Protect the school, the hackers and everyone. Nathan, do you want to leave us with some final remarks? Something to tell the people what next, how to plan for your future, and some advice for our future high school students? Yeah, well, um, and a song. And the a song, audience yeah. wants a song after not this. Not yet, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. But first of all, I would love to first give what I'm going to do next, and then I'm going to say my, uh, my regards. So after high school, first of all, I want to, I want to learn keyboard. I want to learn playing the keyboard because I really want to. I'm very interested in it. Yeah, and then um, I, uh, I also want to serve the Lord. I want to serve the role, the Lord, because I want to, if God allows it, I want to build a ministry, uh, an evangelical ministry. Uh, if Jesus allows it, and um, so my last regards, I will tell the people who are listening to this that the sky is the limit. You can do anything you can you want to do in life. Just put the Lord at the center of it, and work hard for it. Work hard for it. Spend sleepless night for it. Do anything you can do for it because. I have realized that in this life, it might seem a little bit far or a little bit impossible, but it's always possible once you put it, you put in all the dedication and strength you have. Yeah. That's a very beautiful message. Right. So, I mean, yeah, that's a good plan. Learning new things, realizing things. Now, let's. You know, let's end this with giving your personal message to people you love or people out there. Let's let's just have a quick messaging. Let's start by you, Nathan. Well, okay. Um, I'm grateful for the people in my life. I'm grateful for my parents. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my friends because. They helped me in a lot of things, learning new things. I grew up hanging around with them, and um, I'm very thankful for them. 
uh, they know themselves. I'm not going to mention them, but they know themselves. I'm grateful for my parents. I'm grateful for this school because it has shaped me so greatly. And um, above all, I'm grateful for the Lord because I have realized that everything that has happened in my life was to get me closer to Him every single day. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful for them, wherever they are. They must know that I'm saying thank you for them at this stage of life I am at. That's a very good final message. And I know we all would like to say thank, thank you to our teachers, to the people who stayed with us for this long discussion that we had today, a very important, beautiful discussion that is necessary. And we're thankful to the school for motivating us, for bringing us this far, and for teaching us, our parents, and most importantly, God. Asha, do you have anything you want to say? Yes, after all this, I'm actually left speechless because of all the great mindsets out here, all the plans people have, it's impressive. And of course, thank you to the whole faculty, to everyone helping us be here, you know, being our support, encouraging us just pushing us to you know do better one step at a time and you know um i also mentioned this in my graduation speech in grade 10 if you guys remember the four g's god goal um growing and glowing so yes let's keep it going thank you so much for being with us today i hope you have a great day yes thank you very much